Hello, yes. Oh, it's you. Certainly not. We have people here my daughter is playing. Oh, I see. Yes. Then it must be tonight. Come back in an hour. With you see, she will be a great artist. Already she's temperamental. <laughs> we'll be getting along now, Decius. Good night. Many thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night, <clears throat> Good night Mr. Hyde. Good night. <laughs> Professor Vanetti. I'll show you. I've never known that happened to Margaret before. Ah, oh, well, you never know how it's going to take you. I told you to go home an hour ago. It was such beautiful music, Mr. Heiss. So even you can feel such music, huh? Oh, yes, Mr. Heiss, even I. Especially when Miss Margaret plays it. Yes. Now, I told you to go home. Now, do as you are told. You know, it, it must be wonderful to be so beautiful and so talented. Yeah, 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 yeah. You heard what I said? Here, take your hat. Good night, Mr. Heiss. Good night. What do you want? Well, Signor Vanetti, Mr. Heiss is here. But that's impossible. Are you telling me I don't know who I am? I am here. Wait! The senor is asleep. I cannot wake him. No? Well, I can. Stop the noise, please. You see? Well, Mr. Heiss, what is it? Vanetti must speak to you. It's very important. I play good, huh? Hmm, somewhat late for such artistry. Come in here. <laughs> Why do you call it this hour? Why do you upset my daughter? She's crying her eyes out at home. Oh, well, that's good for her. I know that. But you don't have to do it this way. Next time you stop teaching her the violin and start teaching her to be a woman, you consult me first, you understand? Sit down, Mr. Hayes. Mr. Heiss, I want to be honest with you. To teach your daughter, you paid me much more than you need have done. Ah, oh, why not? I charge you a little more for the antiques I sell you, so we are quit. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't you come tonight? Did you forget such an unimportant engagement? I didn't forget. But there was no point in my coming. There's really nothing more I can do for Margaret. I know she's good. Her technique is excellent. But there's no emotion. What? No emotion? The daughter of mine, no emotion? The daughter of a Frenchman? That's your fault. You keep her surrounded by antiques. Oh, so I'm an antique now. A young girl needs contact with human beings. But shall we move into a holiday camp? Oh, don't evade the point. Very well, then advise me. I could arrange for her to complete her studies with Sobia. Sobia? He's even greater then. Than I. And he's a great psychologist. He could turn Margaret from a good player into a brilliant one. Well, then take me to Soviet. He's in Paris. Paris? No. She can't go to Paris. You could go with her. Surely you would like to see your own country again. This is my country. But you couldn't deny her. I would deny her nothing. I would give her the world. But my world does not include France. So she will go on playing just for your friends. Not quite, senor. Let me tell you, she will be the finest violinist England has ever had. 
maybe Europe. We will find another way to help her. Forgive me for intruding. Good night. Saw you. you mind your own business, I'll do as I like, see? Not in my kitchen, you don't walk for two pins on. Oh. Funny place for asthma. possibly see the proprietor? As far as you're concerned, I am the proprietor. Oh. I've had it all my life and my mother before me. How much do you want for it? I must have ten pounds. Yes, at least ten. Four. Oh, but you don't understand. I must have ten pounds. You see, my daughter is... Well, you better try somewhere else. I'll see if that gentleman can give me no. a little more. You can't go in there. I'll ask him. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Your violin practice this morning? You must have been very upset. Uh, what do you want? Oh, whose is it? Uh, the old lady's. She wants ten pounds for it. I've said four. Yeah, give her eight. It's worth it. Thank you, sir. Four. One moment. My assistant misunderstood. Such a beautiful box is worth the ten pounds you ask. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We will find a nice home for it. Eh? I'm sure you will. What is the meaning of this? Well, I was only thinking of your pocket, Mr. Heiss. Oh, do you think nothing of my reputation? Well, I only thought that... Thought, thought, thought. Think, 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 think. Have you no eyes? Can you not see what it meant for her to part with this? Well, I was only trying to be businesslike. Ah, 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 ah. Businesslike. Businesslike. Very well, you shall be. I told you eight pounds. You offered her four, so I had to give her ten. I shall deduct my two pounds lost from your salary, half a crown a week. And you are very lucky I do not discharge you. Well, that was Don't your... thank me. I can't help being generous. Eh, Robert! Hello there. Where have you sprang from? Now, where do you think? Birmingham? Birmingham. The home of the Buddha. Let me tell you, this is a genuine Buddha from Burma. Uh-uh, Birmingham. 
He has been right around the world and now he's home again, like you. And you are the very surprise Margaret needs. Surprise? Didn't you get my telegram? No. Has a telegram come? No, Mr. Heiss. Well, no matter. Come, I'll announce you. She'll be delighted to see you. Margaret! Margaret! The fleet's in! Aren't you feeling well? What, do you think I'm sick? I'm a messenger of love. Yes, dear, I know, but I'm in a hurry. Robert's waiting. You know? Yes, I've just seen his taxi outside. Ah, uh, treason. <laughs> While my daughter puts on the new dress she doesn't think I know she bought, you may show me the presents you bought for me to buy. Right. Now then, any offers? Certainly. I offered to drop it quietly in the river. Huh. I see, no sale. Well, now, what about this? One savage's blowpipe from Senegambia and three poison darts to match. Mm. Oh, don't touch them. That shiny stuff on the point is curare. Curare? Oh, yes, uh, the native poison that produces heart failure. That's right. One scratch from that and you'll be selling St. Peter his golden gates. In the meantime, I'm to sell poison to my customer. <laughs> what else? Well, oh, here's a nice little thing. Oh, and it's okay. Yes, it's Japanese. I picked it up in Kobe. Wonderful carving, isn't it? You know, it takes a lifetime to carve that. Must be worth a bit, eh? Only when it's genuine. Oh. Anything wrong? No, 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 no. Well, cheer up. What else have you got? You know, I don't think I was meant to deal in antiques. Why, if it ain't Mr. Robert. Hello, Mrs. Cat. It's your doctor in the Navy. Mm-hmm. Cutting them up and sewing them up. Well, if this ain't your lucky day. I was at the hospital this morning with five doctors looking at me feet. One of them seizes me leg, and what do you think he says? Hello, my sweet. No, he wasn't that kind of a... <sighs> Robert. Oh, it's good to see you again. You're more beautiful than ever. Is that your taxi ticking up outside? It can wait. Where are we going? Anywhere. Jove, you look terrific. Shakespeare couldn't have put it better. Will ten pounds do? Fine. What for? Then it's okay. It's quite a good one. But you said, don't take any notice of what the dealer says. Watch his eye. Watch his thumb. And watch his daughter. See that she takes care of her new dress. Sure. Of course, it's a fine specimen. But it strikes me that 75 guineas is a bit steep. Well, you won't find another at that price. Have a good time. Well, certainly what I've been looking for. Are you quite sure there can be no reduction in price? Quite sure. Very well. I'll have it. Lucky swine. I beg your pardon. Yes. Where are you speaking from? I see. Very well. Then in ten minutes. <clears throat> what the devil? Why are you still here? Oh, I've just been marking up the new stuff, Mr. Heiss. Been so busy today, I didn't have a chance. But this gives you a chance to run up a little overtime, huh? I must say I can do with it, Mr. Heiss. I'm not exactly overpaid, you know. You're paid exactly what you're worth. Now be off with you. Mr. Heiss. Would you, um, would you tell me the price you want to put on this? Ask me in the morning. Why? I'd rather like to buy it. You? Are you mad? I'm reserving this for a connoisseur. Besides, you are here to sell, not to buy. Now put your things away and go home and bring your head down. Down? Out of the clouds, my boy, out of the clouds! Good night, Mr.
in the name of heaven are you doing out there? Catch a new man, your I shouldn't wonder. My lungs is something horrible. Well, don't leave them hanging about in the night air. I told you to go home. That you did, sir. Two hours afore me time. Well, I forgot to tell you I left your supper in the fridge. All right, all right. Go on off now. I can't stand you moping about the place. Oh, you're not expected to. I can't stand myself sometime. I think I went through with a white <laughs> Hello. Hello, dear. How are you? Cynthia, I would prefer not to reply. I don't want to make your lives miserable. Good evening, Mrs. Cat. What would it be, a drop of gin? Yes, Mr. Lovegrove, I think a drop of gin would be perfectly safe. Would you like the news on, ladies? Tar, I'm sure. And here is the police message. A burglary took place an hour ago at the home of Lady Castleton. Jewelry of considerable value is missing. Will anyone having seen suspicious activities in the vicinity of Porchester Place? The Porchester Place job, eh? Good, Morris. What's good about it? It's the nearest thing I've ever been on. I was as close to that cop as I am to you. You came straight here. I've told you never to do that. Well, I couldn't help it. I had to talk to somebody. Have you any idea what it means to rob a house? A very nice profit, if you are wise. Hmm. The watching, the waiting, and then the getting in. Have you any idea what that does to your nerves? You should be covered by government health insurance. Yes. If the other chap's got a gun, you get shot. Or well, the police are on you before you know where you are. And it's three years in jug. No, thanks. I'm giving it up. You're right, Morris. It's time we retire, both of us. Well, can't you take a joke? It is no joke when you start to develop an imagination and try to kill it with whiskey. It's dangerous. I'll be all right tomorrow. I wasn't serious. But I am. But you can't be. We've known each other for years. We're, we're partners. I know, Morris. But now I'm dissolving the partnership. Well, I've done my part of the job, haven't I? Well, the jobs I've never have touched without you behind me. You can't just walk out like that. I can, and so can you. We agreed on that when we started. Well, maybe, but... But why start something you don't intend to finish? <laughs> why? Why? I'll tell you, my friend. I'll tell you something I've never told a living soul before. You see, when I started in this business, I felt society owed me a debt. The law no longer inspired my respect. It had taught me you could be punished when you were innocent. You see this picture, Morris? It is the one thing in this place that is not for sale. A small boy once lived there. The town was very poor. It was a hard winter, a hungry winter. The boy lived with his mother. She was ill. He had her calling for fruit. Fruit in midwinter. He contrived to get some. Not quite legally. But uh, when he got home, his mother had no use for fruit. He got 14 months. One month for each year of his age. Then he drifted to Marseille. They were a tough lot. But 14 months in a French prison is a good enough passport to hell and visa forever. Then, one night, there was a scuffle. A drunken sea captain was stabbed. When the gendarmes caught them, two of the boys had knives. They were guillotined. Our boy had never owned a knife. Violence and death were the two things he hated most. 
He was sent to Devil's Island. What happened then? Then he escaped and got to England. But flogging leaves its marks. And our boy was to carry them all his life. Morris, I too have served my apprenticeship. That is why I can never return to my country. Why it is unsafe for my daughter to go there. You mean she might find out? She thinks of me as an honest man. I want her to go on thinking so. You are safe enough here? No, Morris. Our business is never safe. Life has cheated me. I shan't let it cheat my daughter. Now, this is the time to stop. I want to devote the rest of my life to Margaret and maybe a few chickens. wanted to give us a little fright, eh? <laughs> and it looks as if you succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> now back to business. That stuff you just brought in. At a rough guess, I would say 5,000. 5,000? Take it or leave it. But the stuff's not worth half that. Would you insult me to my face? Since when did I not know the value of diamonds, hmm? <laughs> Thanks. Why not use it for a little holiday? I'm told Ireland is very good for the nerves. I thought of that too. I'll send you a postcard. No, don't. Everyone reads them. It's a national custom. So long, Maurice. Thanks.
What are you doing here? No harm in having a look round, is there, Mr. Hines? You have no business here, and you know it. What did you come back for? I didn't come back, Mr. Hines. You've been here? All the time. I never left. Then you can leave now. At once. Do you hear? Before I get annoyed. You won't, Mr. Heiss. People like you can't afford to get annoyed, Mr. Heiss. Well, you Shut young... up. I'm doing the talking now. I had a hunch there was something fishy about these busy evenings of yours. I've waited a long time for this, Mr. High and Mighty Heiss. High-class dealer in antiques, high-class fence. Drop it. Right? Much better let me do the talking. Quite a change, too, and I like it. I must never presume to talk. That was too good for a shop boy. It was reserved for Mr. Convict Heiss and his family, wasn't it? <laughs> You'll be sorry for this, Archie. My place was in the shop licking the boots of your classy customers. But you weren't so high class as a murderer, Mr. Heiss. They got you for that once, didn't they? And they'll get you again unless you're very, very careful. What do you want from me? I haven't quite made up my mind. I want some new earrings. Shut up. You had a bracelet last month, didn't you? Uh, this is one of the fastest cars on the road, sir. Its performance is outstanding. Uh, the price is a little high. No, the price doesn't matter. I'll give you a thousand pounds now and the rest in the morning. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, sir. The shop's just closing. The shop's never closed to me. And tell the old man I'm here, will you? I'm afraid Mr. Heiss is on the phone at the moment, sir. OK, I'll wait. Danny, 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 what do you think? I'm going to play at St. Peter's. You are? The professor's arranged it. They're having a sort of sacred concert during even song, and I'm to play the Ave Maria. And, Daddy, what else do you think? My head won't think twice in one day, my sweet. <laughs> it's going to be broadcast. Bravo! Oh, just think of who will be listening. I know of one who will be. Congratulations. Thank you. I say, Archie, another new coat. Do you like it? Oh, yes, but that legacy of yours won't last forever, you know. It'll last as long as I want it to. Uh, I've been waiting to see you. I got bored. I wasn't expecting this pleasure. Uh, I'll run along, Daddy. I've got some letters to write. I've told you not to hang about here. I'm like a stick of dynamite, aren't I? Simply no discretion. Well, what is it this time? Something special for your new flat? That's no business of yours. I want 500 pounds and I'll take it with me, understand? Perfectly. But there is something you must understand. I've paid heavily for my indiscretion. I've paid you over and over again. A price can be too high. Not a price, Mr. Heiss. Call it an insurance. Against my dropping in on the police one day. They're interested in murders and escaped convicts and fences. And blackmailers, too. They are hard on them in this country. No, my little Archie. Go to the police if it amuses you. As well now as later. Good afternoon, Archie. What if she got to know about her precious father? You filthy little swine. That kind of talk won't help. I want 500 pounds. Do I get it?
Um, now that you mention it, I, I could do something new for the flat. Um, radiogram, perhaps. Picture's still not for sale, I suppose. Ah, we'll have to talk about it next time. Goodbye, Mr. Hyatt. One hundred and seventy-five, I'm offered. Come, gentlemen. Must I remind you that this is a genuine Athenian piece, dated six centuries B.C. Have you ever seen finer craftsmanship? Two fifty. Two hundred and fifty? Any increase on that? Two seventy-five? Four hundred. Four hundred? Twenty-five? Fifty? Five hundred? Five hundred pounds, I'm offered. Any advance on that? It's against you. Sold for 500 pounds, Mr. Plover. Now, gentlemen, we come to lot number 78. A round medicine chest said to have been the property of Charles II. Hello there. Ah, yes. oh, Robert. Still thinking of setting up as my rival? Oh, I just dropped in to see the fun. But you've let me down. I never thought you'd let Plover off so cheaply. Oh, damn. It's risky. Since when have you dodged a risk? Not losing your nerve, are you? Hmm. You can't afford nerves in my business. Worried about anything? No, of course not. Margaret says you've been a bit off colour lately. Not sleeping too well and so on. Margaret? You mean she's worried about me? Yeah, she has an idea that you've been borrowing from Archie Fellows. Me? Borrowing from Archie? <laughs> yes, it sounds absurd, I know, but... Well, he keeps on calling in. Well, why shouldn't he wish to buy from his old employer? And tell Margaret, if I'm off colour, it's due to old age and not to Archie Fellows. <laughs> right, sure. Shall I get you a taxi? No, no, I have an appointment. It's not too far to walk. Run along, my boy. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't see anything in it myself. No glamour. I love glamour, don't you? Archie said that picture meant everything to somebody. And he got it for nothing. Can you beat him? How much longer will Archie be? Archie? He never says. He just tells me if anyone drops in, to try and entertain them. Well, I'm trying. Well, 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 look who's here. What a pleasant surprise. You've been a long time. Where have you been? Business. What is this? More business. Nice way to treat a lady. And don't let the porter get fresh with you. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Heiss? You can listen to a proposition. My final proposition. Oh, you don't say. You have to leave the country. Really? Why? Don't tell me Margaret's beginning to cut none. We leave her out of this. I'm willing to deposit the sum of money in a bank to be paid to you over a period of five years. That's very generous of you. The bank will be in Canada. Supposing I don't like Canada? 15,000 pounds. What do you say? Oh, not bad, not bad at all. I'll think it over and let you know. When? Oh, well. Tomorrow may be, say, around seven. Very well. I'll expect you. On second thoughts... Yes? Well, five years is a long time. 
If you can make it 20,000. Yes, I might even do that. I'm beginning to think I shall like Canada. That's sensible of you, Archie. did you get back from Ireland? A few hours ago. I was just on my way around to see you. I'm, uh, I'm onto a job. But I don't suppose you'd be interested. No. And I doubt if you'll be either. Why? What is it? What's wrong? You remember the last night you came to the shop? Yes. Now the kitten scared us, but I remember. It wasn't the kitten. It was Archie Fellows. Archie Fellows? My shop boy. Yes. Well, what about him? He was there, hidden behind the screen. You mean he heard? He heard everything. And he's been blackmailing ever since. Well, then he knows all about me, too. Look, Heiss, I'm not living in the same world as a blackmailer. I know a couple of chaps that'll fix him. I would never agree to that, and you know it, Morris. Now, don't be a fool. I think no more of killing a blackmailer than a rat. You forget I've been through it all. No, Morris. I offered him a lump sum on condition he goes abroad. You think he'll go? I think so. He may haggle over terms, but there is a good chance he'll agree in the end. Well, I hope you're right. As much for his sake as ours. But remember, I promise you, Heiss, I won't live in the same world as a blackmailer. Don't get excited, Morris. It'll be all right. Well, let me know. Hang the thing. Oh, nervy, ain't you? You'll be passing out in the middle of your piece, most likely. I'll be all right once we get to the church. A nice drop of something would pull you together in no time. I could fetch you from downstairs, if you like. No, thanks. Here, fix this for me, will you, please? Ouch! There, now, me own nerves ain't too good, neither. I always say a nice drop of something. The only time for a drop is when you've finished your job. I am finished, sir. Good. Then you may go downstairs. Yes, sir. And keep an ear open for the doorbell. I'm expecting a visitor. Oh, yes, sir. How do I look? Much too smart for a country girl. Country girl? Yes, my little one. I'm going to retire and raise chickens. You mean leave the shop? I'm thinking of selling it. But why? Have you been speculating, Daddy? Have you lost money? <laughs> <laughs> Wiser man than I have made mistakes. But there will be something left. Your studies will continue. It's not me I'm thinking of. It's you. Everything you love is here. It is wherever you are, my dear. While you need me, I ask no other place than that. Well, I shall always need you. Mm, not always. But now we have a job to finish. We must see that a good artist grows into a great one. And maybe for that, the good country will be best. Listen, my dear. These are my plans. They'll be down in a minute, I shouldn't wonder. Okay, I'll make myself at home. Yes, sir. You're not one of them what has to wait to be asked. Oh, Mrs. Cat, will you... Uh... Yeah, of course I will. Will you be going to the concert this evening? Of course I will. Shops closed, you know that. Shops never close to me. So they checked you out the Navy, eh? Well, I'm waiting to be demobilized, if that's what you mean. What are you here for? To see the old man, of course. Mr. Heiss is busy. Tell him I'm here, will you? Mr. Heiss is busy. It's important business. Meaning I'm not. <laughs> well, that's a matter of opinion. Are you trying to be offensive? 
If I were, you'd know it. Okay. Uh, still no sale for the poison darts, I see. You know, these ought to come in handy in your profession. If you happen to make a mistake, mm. if your patient conks out of heart failure, no one's any the wiser. I suppose that's meant to be funny. Isn't it? Hello. I remember this. Still for sale, I suppose. Evidently. I'll have it. Tell the old man to chalk it up, will you? You mind putting that back? You'll keep your blasted hands off me. Just because I have to serve in this shop, you think I'm nobody. So long as I'm here, you're going to learn to mend your manners. I'll have to teach you differently, like I've taught some other people. Meaning what? Margaret doesn't mind my manners. In fact, she's learned to like Why, it. you If you knew what's what, you'd go back in the Navy and leave the coast clear. I've been looking forward to this. Come on, out. Out. I won't forget this in a hurry, remember that. Ah, Robert. Margaret won't be a minute. You haven't been bored with waiting. Well, not exactly. As a matter of fact, I've just been having a go at that ex-shop boy of yours. Archie. Mm. What happened? I threw him out. Robert, you didn't. I did. I'm afraid I socked him into the bargain. You socked him? Mm. Hard? Well, uh, hard enough. Uh, what did he say? Well, it... uh, Robert, tell... Excuse me. Hello. Oh, yes, Archie. Yes, I know. I'm sorry to have missed you. Uh, never mind. Tomorrow will do. Tonight? That's impossible. You see, I'm going out. It's something I can't put off. I'll be along in half an hour, see? If you're not there, I know where I can find you, and I can talk as well in a church as anywhere else. Very well. I'll be here. Uh, I'm not late, am I? Oh, no. There's plenty of time. But it seems so strange that you'd let a headache keep him at home. It came on so suddenly. There must be something behind it all. Oh, Robert, I'm frightened. I know, darling, but try not to worry about it now. Come now. I'll show you your place. Come in. It's good you're punctual. There are some details to discuss about the trip. I've been inquiring about transport. The French have a very good line. Comfortable ships, I'm told, and uh, quite fast. Sit down. You should be in Canada in five or six days. And once Shut you're up. there... You can forget Canada. I warned you, Archie. That's all I'm prepared to do. That's all I can do. Tough, isn't it? I could cry my eyes out. That's why I'm going to make things easier for you, Mr. Heiss. What is it now? All I want is the right kind of opportunity. You know, some sort of position in life. A little business, maybe. Business? Why not? Look at yours. Wonderful opportunity, something to be proud of. <laughs> Old establishment, classy clientele, and a sideline that's a real moneymaker. Might be run better, of course. You know, you could do with someone to share the responsibility. I see. You want a partnership. That's it. What could be more natural than to keep it in the family? The family? You know, Something happened a little while ago this evening that gave me a new idea. I'm going to marry Margaret. You don't want Margaret. You want my business. I intend to have both. 
My daughter is engaged. Engagements can be broken off. You have a lot of influence with Margaret. She'll do anything you say. And what if I refuse? If she knew the truth about you, she'd marry me to keep me quiet. Think it over. Why aren't we listening to her? We wouldn't want to disappoint her, would we? won't like it, just at first. I'm not sure that I mind that. What's the matter with you? Are you all right? Mm. Hey, you can't die on me now. Mm. Come on, snap out of it. Mm. That's better. <laughs> Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, Defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. Molto bene, Margarita. You were excellent. Your poor control could have been better. But you are not staying for the rest of the service. I'm sorry, no. My father's not well and he's all alone. You'll explain to the vicar for me, won't you? And thank him for letting me play. Thanking him? It's the vicar who should thank me. Thank you, my dear. Goodbye. 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 You've brought your car. Well, you told me to. And by telephone. I had to break a rule. I need your help, badly. What's the matter? Tough spot? You don't have to help me, you know. You can sleep off and forget it. And no hard feelings. <laughs> what about the tough spot you've got me out of? Come on. What is it? No, it's not Archie's car. You'll come in, won't you? Yes, I think I'd better have a look at your father.
about those? We might as well have left our visiting cards. Huh. They'll be gone in an hour in this weather. Come on. ready for it. Oh, you're better. I told you last night that my walk had done me good. Oh, I wasn't just thinking of your headache. I've been worried about you for ages. You're very observant, my dear, but you fail to observe that there is no sugar. Oh, I'll get you some. Do you notice anything else? Yes, you've been fussing with my paper. It's inside out. And? And I don't like it. Oh, Daddy, please read it. Ave Maria, beautifully rendered by Miss Margaret Heiss as a violin solo was the outstanding feature of last night's sacred concert at St. Peter. Mm. We are already becoming famous. But it should be on the front page. I shall change my paper. Ring the news agent. Uh, no, get me the editor. Oh, don't get excited, darling. Wait for the evening papers. Oh, you intend to be on the front page in the evening papers? Yes, Daddy. With headlines and the photograph, maybe? Yes, Daddy. Oh, please ask me why. Why? The memorial concert on Friday. Benetti asked the director to listen to the broadcast. And he did. And he's including me in the program as soloist. You? Yes. With the British Symphony Orchestra? Yes. Wow! <laughs> You've always believed, haven't you? Yes, my dear. They're very lucky to have you. <laughs> Are you sure there's nothing in here about it? No, I've looked at all the headlines. We've just got to wait for the evening papers. Yes, and I have to wait for my coffee, because my daughter is a star. And she won't bring me sugar. Hmm? Oh, heavens, the sugar. Hello? Yes? Yes, that's right. Hold on, will you? It's Scotland Yard. Oh, it'll be Major Elliot. Still after my direction clock. Hi, speaking. Archie Phillips. Yes, he was. You can't mean that, surely. Of course, I'll come. Major Elliot, oh, I know his room. We are good friends. Goodbye. Come in. Inspector Robson, sir. I've tried to convince him that I don't need announcing at Scotland Yard. Watch him, Robson. Or he'll buy the rogues gallery from us and send it back to us at a profit. Eh, hey, old villain? No. I deal only in antiques. The rogues gallery is very up to date. We thank you. All right, Robson. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. What do you got there? Oh, just something I picked up. Well, what can I do for you? Hmm? Well, it's about the fellow's case. I was wondering if you could tell me anything about him. Well? I employed him as a shop assistant until he bettered himself. Know anything about his family? I'm afraid not. He must have had some, I think. Yeah, I rather imagine so. I mean, uh, that legacy of his. Yes. Yes, where did that come from? I believe he mentioned an aunt. Oh, stop fiddling with that string. I wanted to make sure it was safe. It's rather valuable, you know. Come in. Thank you, Johnson. Did he tell you about his aunt last night? Huh? No, a few weeks ago. I hope you didn't pay too much for this inquiry. Oh, why? It's been damaged. I don't believe it. The inlay has been lifted and badly replaced. Still, it's worth three or four pounds. I gave 15 for it. Mm, from Plover, huh? Pity you changed your antique dealer. No, I didn't. I just happened to see it, that's all. You didn't see it very clearly. Well, anything else I can tell you? Yes. 
Did you see Archie Fellows last night or didn't you? That is so. Which is? I didn't. Oh, when did you see him last? Uh, last week, perhaps. One o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Dresden clock, eh? No, much better than that. Personal property of Lady Hamilton, and still in going order. Oh, go on, go on, undo it. Well, if you insist. Archie's death must have been a bit of a shock, eh? No. I didn't expect him to live long. The young fool would drive that high-powered car. He wasn't driving a car. He was dumped out of one dead. So I understand. You're about to turn green with envy. Oh. Lovely movement. You found the car, I suppose. No, but we shall. Well, how much do you want for it? Well, as you are my very good friend, 50 guineas. Now, you forget I'm your very good friend and start again, will you? 50 pounds, then. I'll give you 30. 50. 35. 50. You never give anything away, do you? Not if I can help it. Aren't they? Yes. Hmm? Just about as funny as that policeman at the gate. What do they know at the yard? Nothing definite. They're just beginning to smell around. <laughs> they do know he was dumped out of a car. And they're looking for the car. Uh, my car. Where is it? Outside. Are you mad? Now listen to me. Drive it out into the country, leave it, and get straight back to town. I still know it's my car. Naturally. <laughs> All you have to do is walk into a police station. Me? Yes, you. And report it stolen early last night. Yes, well, I don't happen to like police stations. <laughs> For once, they will be on your side, my friend. Well, I hope you're right. When do we meet again? This is goodbye, Morris. Good luck to you, and don't lose your head. See that number? Hello, headquarters. Car 5G calling. We're following EGP 826, proceeding west on Kingston Bypass. Over. Hello, cars. Hello, cars. EGP 826 heading west on Kingston Bypass. Over.
Hello, boy. Sorry to bother you again. It is no bother. But the price is still 50 pounds. Now, I haven't come about the clock. As a matter of fact... I know, I know, I have it. Your poker face doesn't deceive me, Major. I know why you have come. Really? You want to know why I've murdered my ex-shop boy, right? Wrong. Well, then you want my advice about something you are buying from another dealer. <laughs> Wrong again. Come on, sit down. As a matter of fact, I want your help. Oh, I want to know something about a friend of yours. A friend of mine? A man by the name of Corda Morris. Morris, Morris. Oh, yes. Tall, dark, bit on the thin side, right? Mm -hmm. An occasional customer. Money, a little. But no taste. What makes you think he's a friend of mine? To be frank, we're guessing. We found out that Morris knew Archie Fellows. You also knew Archie Fellows, so it seemed likely that you must know Morris. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs> Pretty clever fellows you are. Oh, all in the day's work, you know. But surely you don't suspect Morris of the murder? We suspect everyone. That's our job. What are you going to do? Arrest him? Good oh, Lord, no. We're policemen, not undertakers. We don't prosecute dead men. Morris? Dead? Yes, car smash. Poor fellow. How horrible. Is there something I can do? Well, that's why I'm here. He's got to be officially identified. I thought you wouldn't mind. It's just a formality, of course. Of course. I'm delighted to be of help. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you would be. Well, I'm sorry to rush you, but I got an appointment at the yard afterwards. What? Not another murder? Oh, no, no. Same one. Right, wait here, will you, driver? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Briggs. Is Robson here? He's inside, sir. Smoke? Hey, no, thanks. I have a cigar. <coughs> well? That's him. Good. That's one of them. I'd know him anywhere. Would you recognize the other one if you saw him? Oh, I don't know. Is he dead, too? He's very much alive. Oh, I don't want to see any more. You're not going to see any more. Yes, I now, pull yourself together. Yeah. Get a grip on yourself. All right? Yes. Come on, then. Ah, oh, Miss Dowser. This is Mr. Heiss. Very pleased to meet you, sir, I'm sure. Please, sir, I want to go home now. Please, sir, let me go home now, now Ruby, sir. I won't keep you long. Just a few more questions. The man in there, he was one of the men at the car? Yes, sir. And the other one, what did he look like? I couldn't rightly say, sir. But you saw his face, didn't you? Yes, sir. Well, then, was he... was he old or was he young? He was a bit of both, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let's try it another way. Can you think of anyone he looked like? Did he look like me, for instance? Or the inspector here? Or would you say he looked like me? Take a good look at all of us. No, sir, I couldn't rightly say he looked like any of you gentlemen. Well, this isn't getting us much further, is it? Oh, will you come in now? Thank you, my dear. You've been very helpful. Now, Dr. Graham, according to your earlier statements, you last saw Archie Fellows on the night of the murder about 7 o'clock. That's right. So far, you're the last one to see him alive. You had a violent quarrel with him. Not exactly. I should call it an argument. Or whatever you call it, you assaulted him. I tipped him on the jaw, if that's what you mean. And forcibly threw him out. And he deserved it, too. Mm -hmm. Now, what caused this friendly little argument? I don't see what that's got to do with this murder. You're not expected to. Answer the question, please. Well, I'll put it another way. I don't see what it's got to do with you. You're willfully suppressing evidence. I'm doing nothing of the sort. Now, one moment, Inspector. Now, Doctor, all this may seem irrelevant, but a lady friend of Archer's seems to think that he was too fond of your fiancée. No, it's all right. Margaret's a friend of mine. I'm sorry. Well, 
Well, the little rat said something about Margaret I didn't like, so I socked him. <laughs> I rather thought it was something like that. Well, uh, what were your movements after this little incident? Well, I took Margaret to St. Peter's Church. Mm-hmm. We got back about ten, and uh, I left her and walked home. Uh, meet anyone on the way? No. Anyone see you enter your home? No. And you didn't see Archie again? No, I did not. No, oh, thank you very much, that's all. I'm sorry to have kept you so long. Where do you get this? Why, Dr. Graham? Does it mean anything to you? I suppose it's part of the stuff Archie carried around in his pockets. Oh, you've seen it before, have you? Well, I've seen a lot of them out east. There's nobody else. You've seen this one before. Well, it's hard to say. They're not uncommon, you know. Yeah. Archie was interested in antiques, wasn't he? Not that I know of. Really? I wondered. So many of the heist treasures were found in his flat. Oh, well. See you tomorrow at ten. Tomorrow? You don't mind, do you? No. Well, see you tomorrow. Good day. Well, sir? He's lying, of course. Now, check up on that, will you, and find out where it came from. By tomorrow, if possible. Very good, sir. Hello, Joe. Any blow from Newmarket? Oh, six... Oh, yes, all right. Uh, five each way lies a man, dear. All right, all right. I ain't got skates, so... Mr. Heist back yet? He is. And if it's anyone else you want to see, there's nothing doing, because she's bathing for the concert. Oh, there you are. Look, an excellent picture of Margaret. And quite a bit about the concert tonight. I know, I've seen it. Oh. Nothing else? For what else should I look? Well, something that's been in the news for several days. The murder of Archie Fellows. Oh, murder against the debut. That's competition. I've just come from Scotland Yard. They seem to think I had something to do with it. You? Absurd. Oh, I know. I can clear all that up. What I'm worried about is you. Why me? I wish I didn't have to tell you. You're Margaret's father and my friend and... Go on. Well, it's about Archie coming back here that night. Oh, that. Elliot mentioned it to me, too. It's nonsense, of course. Is it? Certainly. I was here most of the time. Surely I'd know if he came back. That's the trouble, sir. You do know. What makes you think I'm lying? Oh, dozens of things. Archie's visits after his sudden legacy and the change in you. You were worried out of your life. Cracking up, I could see that. And Archie was getting impossible. He came to a head that last evening when I threw him out. Then you staged a headache. And you're assuming quite a lot. Are you asking me to believe that a headache would keep you from Margaret's broadcast? It didn't stop you from having a visitor. It didn't stop you from going out, either. I thought I had explained that. It didn't seem to matter then, but now this new thing. What new thing? The Netsuki. The one I brought back from the East. I took it away from Archie that evening and I put it on this mantelpiece. Well, then it must still be there. It's at Scotland Yard. They found it in Archie's pocket. I see. That proves he came back here when Margaret and I were at the church. What else can it mean? He did come back, didn't he? Yes, he did come back. It was blackmail. You see, part of my business has been what you would probably call a little unorthodox. And Archie found out about it. Yes, I'd begun to suspect that from the way he behaved. He never stopped hounding me. Money, all of his money. And that night he wanted more? No. He wanted Margaret. And I'd have killed him too. You see, Robert, I'm not a violent man. I did not plan it. I did not ask him to come back. But what are we going to do? I mean, they'll question me again about the Netsuki. What on earth am I going to tell them? The truth, of course. Oh, you know I can't do that. They'll get it out of you somehow. Not if I can help it. They are cleverer than you are. No, Robert. You must not bring trouble on yourself. 
it wouldn't help me or anyone. They don't want to see me till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Will you trust me? I must think this out for myself. For all of us. We've only till tomorrow. Time enough. And now I'm afraid I shall have things to do. Goodbye, sir. Robert. About Margaret. You mustn't worry, sir. I'll take good care of her. Always. My friend. A very good friend. We'll wait. They will be out in a minute. Keep your head up, little one, and smile. What, feeling like this? Feeling like what? Petrified. Oh, that's good. What's good about being frightened? If you weren't, you would have no feeling. If you had no feeling, you wouldn't be my daughter. If you weren't my daughter, I wouldn't be your father. How sad for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> that's better. You sure you won't come with us? No, I prefer to walk. You don't mind? Oh, darling, of course not. Just so long as you're there. If you weren't, I... I think I'd just fold up. Margaret, I want you to remember one thing. It doesn't really matter whether you always see me. I shall always be there when you are playing. And now they will be waiting to hear a fine artist. And to put the world at her feet. Professor Vanetti. Good evening, Mr. Heiss. Good evening, Margaret. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, that sounds wonderful, but... I think there's something even more important. What could be more important? To be loved so much. Oh, my little one. But there is something else very important that is not to be laid <laughs> off of you. Good luck. God bless you, little one. Lady. Love a bunch of other ladies, please. Love a bunch of other ladies. Ever lady. Love the other sir. Ever for luck, sir. Ever for luck, sir. Ever for luck. Luck? Huh? Yeah. I take the luck. Oh, big, big for your butt now, ain't it? <laughs> oh, no. It isn't for me. I've had my share of luck and no complaints. My compliments, madame. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Either for luck, either for luck. Lovely Heather ladies. Who buy a bunch of nice Heather? On the left, sir. Upstairs, sir, and to the right. Yes, I'm afraid, sir. As a matter of fact, I'm supposed to be sitting with some friends downstairs. But I thought a little peace and quiet. I don't blame you, sir. That's the way to appreciate beautiful music. Can I get you anything, sir? Thank you. I'd like a pair of opera glasses, if you've got them.
The real thing. What you know already? Oh, it's in the air. <laughs> you get to know after 40 years of it. I've heard the best. All of them. And a lot more. Chrysler. Elman. Kubelik. Caruso. That's the music of happiness, sir. She'll do bigger things than that when she's known the other side of it. And when that happens, she'll be there, along with them. me to give you this.
there now. Nothing else? No, I've been expecting it for months. I'll go and fetch the manager. There won't be any fuss. Thanks, I'll look after Margaret. Our appointment tomorrow. I'll be there. It won't be necessary. The case is closed. Thank you.